Hello everyone, it's Sun back again with another Exodus reading video. This is Bible ASMR and we will be continuing from chapter 25 and we will read up to chapter 28. How have you guys been? have been watching the football. I saw Italy versus Spain just now and it was a great game. Um, it's unfortunate for the Spanish fans but Italy played really well. Tomorrow will be England versus Denmark so hopefully England go through. England does look like the stronger team so hopefully England wins and hopefully it's uh, coming home. So I don't have many updates, you know, I'm trying to plan a few trips with some friends to uh, different places in the UK because, you know, I don't want to go abroad with all this pandemic going on. I also had clinics today, I saw one patient just to review a bridge that I gave him. And uh, the bridge was a little bit high, so I had to reduce some of the a bridge with a burr um, on a drill and um, and it went okay. I was hoping to reduce a little bit more but um, the metal wing is so thin that it was starting to basically disappear and we don't want that so I couldn't reduce more. Um, but the good thing is that our body adjusts automatically to changes in our mouths. So um, is bridges which are slightly high on the left hand side because I gave him a left and a right one um, the one on his left um, should feel better in about three weeks um, other than that I'm trying to exercise more which is good I'm, I'm still going to bed really late like I'm going to sleep really late it's a really bad habit and I always say this to everyone and I never fix it so uh, I should probably play, pray for that so before we start let us pray and also I'll read out some of the nice comments you guys have read, uh, left me at the end of this video. But um, first, let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for giving me this opportunity in my room with peace, with some quiet at this time to be able to read your word. Lord, I pray that as we read this, that we can somehow understand this and we can, we can, as we spend more time with this scripture and with the word, we can really take it seriously and even if it makes very little sense to us, Lord, I pray that you can, through your amazing and sometimes inexplicable power, help us to understand this further. Lord, help us to be uh, reading your word regularly and as often as we can, but I also pray that in our daily lives, with all my friends watching this video, that with their lives, whatever that they are doing, I pray that, Lord, I know that you are with them, Lord, I, I just urge my friends to be with the Lord, and myself to always remember to be with the Lord, whenever I am weak, whenever my friends are weak, Lord, I pray that when we might be tested, I pray that you can be there for us, and Lord, I pray that we can all be, always be thankful for the things that we have, such as food and friends and somewhere to stay. Lord, I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Exodus chapter 25. The Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. These are the offerings you are to receive from them gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red, and another type of durable leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. Then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. Make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. Have them make an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. O 
overlay it with pure gold, both inside and out, and make a gold molding around it. Cast four gold rings for it and fasten them to its four feet, with two rings on one side and two rings on the other. Then make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Insert the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry it. The poles are to remain in the rings of this ark. They are not to be removed. Then put the ark and the tablets of the covenant law which I will give you. Make an atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide, and make two cherubim out of hammered gold at the ends of the cover. Make one cherub on one end and the second cherub on the other. Make the cherubim of one piece with the cover at the two ends. The cherubim are to have the wings spread upward, overshadowing the cover with them. The cherubim are to face each other, looking toward the cover. Place the cover on top of the ark and put in the ark the tablets of the covenant law that I will give you. There, above the cover between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the covenant law, I will meet with you and give you all my commands for the Israelites. Make a table of acacia wood, two cubits long, a cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold and make a gold moulding around it. Also make around it a rim a hand breadth width wide and put a gold moulding on the rim. Make four gold rings for the table and fasten them to the four corners where the four legs are. The rings are to be close to the rim to hold the poles used in carrying the table. Make the poles of acacia wood, overlay them with gold and carry the table with them and make its plates and dishes of pure gold, as well as its pitchers and bowls for pourings out of offerings. Put the bread of the presence on this table to be before me at all times. Make a lamp stand. A lamp stand of pure gold. Hammer out its base and shaft and make its flower like cups, buds and blossoms of one piece with them. Six branches are to be ex are to extend from the sides of the lampstand, three on one side and three on the other. Three cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms are to be on one branch, three on the next branch, and the same for all six branches extending from the lampstand. And on the lampstand there are to be four cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms. One bud shall be under the first pair of branches extending from the lampstand, a second bud under the second pair, and a third bud under the third pair, six branches in all. The buds and branches should all be of one piece with the lampstand hammered out of pure gold. Then make it seven lamps and set them up on it, so that they light the space in front of it. Its wick trimmers and trays are to be of pure gold. A talent of pure gold is to be used for the lampstand in all these accessories. See that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. Make the tabernacle with ten curtains of finely twisted lemon and linen and blue and purple and scarlet yarn, with cherubim woven into them by a skilled worker. All the curtains are to be the same size, 28 cubits long and 4 cubits wide. Join five of the curtains together and do the same with the other five. Make loops of blue material along the edge of the end curtain in one set and do the same with the end curtain in the other set. Make 50 loops on one curtain and 50 loops on the end curtain of the other set with the loops opposite each other. Then make 50 gold clasps and use them to fasten the curtains together so that the tabernacle is a unit. Make curtains of goat hair for the tent over the tabernacle, 11 altogether. All 11 curtains are to be the same size, 30 cubits long and 4 cubits wide. Join 5 of the curtains together into one set and the other 6 into another set. Fold the 6th curtain double at the front of the tent. Make 50 loops along the edge of the end curtain in one set and also along the edge of the end curtain in the other set. Then make 50 bronze clasps and put them in the loops to fasten the tent together as a unit. As for the additional length of the tent curtain,
curtains. The half curtain that is left over is to hang down at the rear of the tabernacle. The tent curtains will be a cubit longer on both sides. What is left will hang over the sides of the tabernacle so as to cover it. Make for the tent a covering of ram skins dyed red, and over that a covering of the other durable leather. Make upright frames of acacia wood for the tabernacle. Each frame is to be ten cubits long and a cubit and a half wide, with two projections set parallel to each other. Make all the frames of the tabernacle in this way. Make twenty frames for the south side of the tabernacle, and make forty silver bases to go under them. Two bases for each frame, one under each projection. For the other side, the north side of the tabernacle, make twenty frames, and forty silver bases, two under each frame. Make six frames for the far end, that is, the west end of the tabernacle, and make two frames for the corners at the far end. At these two corners they must be double from the bottom all the way to the top, and fitted into a single ring, both shall be like that. So there will be eight frames and sixteen silver bases, two under each frame. Also make cross bars of acacia wood, five for the frames on one side of the tabernacle, five for those on the other side, and five for the frames on the west, at the far end of the tabernacle. The centre crossbar is to extend from end to end at the middle of the frames. Overlay the frames with gold and make gold rings to hold the crossbars. Also overlay the crossbars with gold. Set up the tabernacle according to the plan shown you on the mountain. Make a curtain of blue, purple and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen with cherubim woven into it by a skilled worker. Hang it with gold hooks on four posts of acacia wood overlaid with gold and standing on four silver bases. Hang the curtain from the clasps and place the Ark of the Covenant Law behind the curtain. The curtain will separate the holy place from the most holy place. Put the atonement cover on the Ark of the Covenant Law in the most holy place. Place the table outside the curtain on the north side of the tabernacle and put the lampstand opposite it on the south side. For the entrance to the tent, make a curtain of blue, purple and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen, the work of an embroiderer. Make gold hooks for this curtain and five posts of acacia wood overlaid with gold, and cast five bronze bases for them. Build an altar of acacia wood three cubits high. It is to be square, five cubits long and five cubits wide. Make a horn at each of the four corners, so that the horns and the altar are of one piece, and overlay the altar with bronze. Make all its utensils of bronze, its pots to remove the ashes, and its shovels, sprinkling bowls, meat forks, and fire pans. Make a grating for it, a bronze network, and make a bronze ring at each of the four corners of the network. Put it under the ledge of the altar so that it is halfway up the altar. Make poles of acacia wood for the altar and overlay them with bronze. The poles are to be inserted into the rings, so they will be on the two sides of the altar when it is carried. Make the altar hollow, out of boards. It is to be made just as you were shown on the mountain. Make a courtyard for the tabernacle. The south side shall be a hundred cubits long and is to have curtains of finely twisted linen, with twenty posts and twenty bronze bases and with silver hooks and bands on the posts. The north side shall also be a hundred cubits long and is to have curtains with twenty posts and twenty bronze bases and with silver hooks and bands on the posts. The west end of the courtyard shall be fifty cubits wide and have curtains with ten posts and ten bases. On the east end toward the sunrise, the courtyard shall also be fifty cubits wide. Curtains fifteen cubits long are to be on one side of the entrance, with three posts and three bases. And curtains fifteen cubits long are to be on the other side, with three posts and three bases. For the entrance to the courtyard, provide a curtain, twenty cubits long, of blue, purple and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen. The work of an embroiderer with four posts and four bases. All the posts around the courtyard are to have silver bands and hooks and 
bronze bases. The courtyard shall be a hundred cubits long and fifty cubits wide, with curtains of finely twisted linen five cubits high, and with bronze bases. All the other articles used in the service of the tabernacle, whatever their function, including all the tent pegs for it and those for the courtyard, are to be of bronze. Command the Israelites to bring you clear oil of pressed olives for the light, so that the lamps may be kept burning. In the tent of meeting outside the curtain, what she that shields the Ark of the Covenant Law, Aaron and his sons are to keep the lamps burning before the Lord from evening till morning. This is to be a lasting ordinance among the Israelites for the generations to come. Have Aaron your brother brought to you from among the Israelites, along with his sons Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar, so they may serve me as priests. Make sacred garments for your brother Aaron to give him dignity and honour. Tell all the skilled workers to whom I have given wisdom in such matters that they are to make garments for Aaron for his consecration so he may serve me as priest. These are the garments they are to make, a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. They are to make these sacred garments for your brother Aaron and his sons, so they may serve me as priests. Have them use gold and blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and fine linen. Make an ephod of gold and of blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and of finely twisted linen, the work of skilled hands. It is to have two shoulder pieces attached to two of its corners, so it can be fastened. Its skillfully woven waistband is to be like it, of one piece with the ephod and made with gold, and with blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and with finely twisted linen. Take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel, in the order of their birth, six names on one stone and the remaining six on the other. Engrave the names of the sons of Israel on the two stones, the way a gem cutter engraves a seal. Then mount the stones in gold fil filigree settings and fasten them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as memorial stones for the sons of Israel. Aaron is to bear the names on his shoulders as a memorial before the Lord. Make gold filigree settings and two braided chains of pure gold like a rope and attach the chains to the settings. Fashion a breast piece for making decisions, the work of skilled hands. Make it like the ephod of gold and of blue, purple and scarlet yarn and of finely twisted linen. It is to be square, a span long and a span wide and folded double. Then mount four rows of precious stones on it. The first row shall be carnelian, chrysolite and beryl. The second row shall be turquoise, lapis lazuli, and emerald. The third row shall be jacinth, agate, and amethyst. The fourth row shall be topaz, onyx, and jasper. Mount them in gold filigree settings. There are to be twelve stones, one for each of the names and of the sons of Israel, each engraved like a seal with the name of one of the twelve tribes. For the breast piece, make braided chains of pure gold like a rope. Make two gold rings for it and fasten them to two corners of the breast piece. Fasten the two gold chains to the rings at the corners of the breast piece and the other ends of the chains to the two settings, attaching them to the shoulder pieces of the ephod at the front. Make two gold rings and attach them to the other two corners of the breast piece on the inside edge next to the ephod. Make two more gold rings and attach them to the bottom of the shoulder pieces on the front of the ephod close to the seam just above the waistband of the ephod. The rings of the breast piece are to be tied to the rings of the ephod with blue cord connecting it to the waistband so that the breast piece will not swing out from the ephod. Whenever Aaron enters the holy place, he will bear the names of the sons of Israel over his heart on the breast piece of decision as a continuing memorial before the Lord. Also put the Urim and the Thummim in the breast piece so they may be over Aaron's heart whenever he enters the presence of the Lord. Thus Aaron will always bear the means of making decisions for the Israelites.
rights over his heart before the Lord. Make the robe of the ephod entirely of blue cloth, with an opening for the head in its centre. There shall be a woven edge like a collar around this opening, so that it will not tear. Make pomegranates of blue, purple and scarlet yarn around the hem of the robe with gold bells between them. The gold bells and the pomegranates are to alternate around the hem of the robe. Aaron must wear it when he ministers. The sound of the bells will be heard when he enters the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out so that he will not die. Make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it as on a seal, holy to the Lord. Fasten a blue cord to it to attach it to the turban. It is to be on the front of the turban. It will be on Aaron's forehead, and he will bear the guilt involved in the sacred gifts the Israelites consecrate, whatever their gifts may be. It will be on Aaron's forehead continually, so that they will be acceptable to the Lord. Weave the tunic of fine linen and make the turban of fine linen. The sash is to be the work of an embroiderer. Make tunics, sashes and caps for Aaron's sons to give them dignity and honour. After you put these clothes on your brother Aaron and his sons, anoint and ordain them. Consecrate them so they may serve me as priests. Make linen undergarments as a covering for the body, reaching from the waist to the thigh. Aaron and his sons must wear them whenever they enter the tent of meeting, or approach the altar to minister in the holy place, so that they will not incur guilt and die. This is to be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants. Right, what did you guys think? <laughs> so many instructions. Gold, topaz, blue, scarlet, uh, purple yarn, gold, silver, bronze, ephod, 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 ephod. All these instructions. Why do we care? Does any of this matter? Why do we care? We're in 2021. There's a pandemic going on. You know, in Canada, it's hit 49.6 degrees Celsius. There was a building that collapsed in Miami. You know, there was a volcanic eruption like last month in the Democratic Republic of the Congo in Africa. And there was a mudslide in Japan and people are losing jobs or maybe finding a job. People are getting married. People are getting divorced. Everyone's working. <laughs> Why do we care about Exodus and the three chapters that we read? Maybe it matters because it shows that to enter the earth, God wanted a very special tent, a very special tabernacle, which is kind of a tent with very special lampstands, and a table, and an altar, and a very special place that only Moses, or only Aaron, or only a very select few can enter, and be able to receive instructions, or maybe speak with God. The word holy, I believe, or I was told, means to be distinct, to be separated, not to be special, but to be you know, to be distinct, distinguished. And so when in Exodus they say the holy place, the holy place, it's a distinguished place. And, and God will only be with distinguished people, or, or he will only reside in distinguished places. So maybe that's why God spent so much time explaining to Moses exactly how he wanted his house to be on earth, how beautiful he wanted it with lots of gold, and to be embroidered and designed and fashioned by very skilled hands with very expensive blue, purple, scarlet linen, and finely twisted yarns. 
he wanted a very special place and I don't think we can blame him. He made us, he made us special, he can decide how he wants to reside with the people of Israel when he is walking with them through the wilderness. And so when we read this, it can be a bit boring. And I have a feeling, you know, when we get to like Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy and all that stuff, it might not be interesting, you know. I have comments. For example, Bidir 9875 says, please do Psalms too, bro. So he wants me to read Psalms. Psalms is amazing. Psalms is amazing. Uh, La Maru says, well, good night, guys. And uh, I don't know your name. It's, it's the teddy bear emoji. I came back to this video because I wanted to start reading along instead of just listening to them before I go to bed. And this reminds me, I would love to hear your testimony someday. It would be nice if you made a video talking about it. Yes, I will make a testimony video. Um, I don't know, I just, you know, I think maybe I should plan what I'm going to say before I say it. You know, so maybe I should take some time to plan the video. But then usually I'm the type of person to be really spontaneous. So I'll just be like, hey, you know, this is how I came to love Jesus, love God. You know, even though I'm a sinner, you know, even though I make so many mistakes every day, the same mistakes over and over and over, and, and it's not funny, I mean, maybe it is funny, I don't know, but, you know, so I would love to share my testimony, and there are some things that I might not be as comfortable sharing, so I'm not sure if I'll share every detail, but, you know, I, I just, I think I'm just so lucky, just so blessed to have been exposed to the love of Jesus and the love of God, um, you know, because my dad was a pastor, you know, he studied theology in South Korea, he met my mom, they got married, my dad became a pastor, a, a Christian pastor, and so, you know, growing up, that's what we talked about, God and faith and right and wrong, good and bad, evil and God and Jesus and church and righteousness that's what I grew up talking about so I used to feel really lonely really 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 lonely at school or with friends because they would not have any idea what any of that is about and maybe some of you guys could relate to me if you've been to church since you were little or if you want to talk about faith or religion, and it's quite difficult to do that nowadays, you know, it's not easy, especially with people that, you know, aren't religious, um, or don't really think about God, or has, has given up on God, you know, so, because that's my background, uh, that's one of the reasons why I've been very fortunate to have been exposed in this way. But then I have friends who also have parents who are pastors and whatever, and they have given up on God, you know, and it's difficult for them. They've gone through trauma, they've gone through, you know, heartbreak from other human beings, and they've gone through trauma from other Christians, and that's one of the most painful things I think that any one of us can suffer pain from another Christian, pain from another believer, because we've opened our hearts to them, we've let them into our hearts, they are our brothers and sisters in Christ, and they have hurt us, how dare they? If you have parents who are Christian, how dare they claim that they love Jesus, and also cause us so much pain, how dare they? How dare they? And so often you see people giving up on Jesus and God. How can God exist? It's so painful. It's so painful. Life is so hard. How can God love us? It's not possible, is what some people might think. But I disagree with that. Uh, Igor says, Hi son, all good luck to you, my boy. Just walk in sight of God and remember how great he is. Just like John says on 25 verse 21, Stay safe and stay blessed, bro. Amen.
says on 2521. John doesn't go up to chapter 25, right? Maybe he's talking about... I'm not sure. <laughs> I was looking for it and I was like, John 25 doesn't exist, I don't think. Um, Christy ASMR, hey. Uh, she says, thanks for the update. She has a lot of... She has 15.6 thousand subscribers, wow. <laughs> I hope you're well, Christy. Thank you for visiting us. Um... Thank you for your lovely messages, and it's been 31 minutes, I didn't think I'd make this video so long. I love you guys. Uh, stay with God, let's be strong, okay? You know, let's, let's love each other, and I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you so much. Good night.